a lot of people ask me Michael how do you get some of the prophetic words that you get some people ask me how do you hear God in that way and there's really no one particular way that God speaks to me but there's multiple ways that God speaks to me just like there's multiple ways that God is endeavoring to speak to you there's multiple ways that God is endeavoring to speak to you. I'm coming on here and I'm trying to teach and we're going to have a little bit of a chat. But what I really want to do is I want to inspire you to begin to press into the Lord, to hear his voice in new ways. I want to believe God that because this is our prophetic class, this is our, um, this is our prophetic class we just ended our gifts and callings and prophetic giftings portion of this class and now we're getting into hearing the voice of God portion of this class I want to believe God to activate your vision to activate dreams to activate his voice in your life that's what I want to believe God to do today so that's what we're going to do so um, I'm actually going to pull up a scripture verse here the foundation scripture for this teaching is going to be out of John 10 5 and John 10 27 and basically those two scriptures are saying that um, his sheep knows his voice in other words we know his voice and the voice of another we don't follow um, it's a common practice that when the shepherd is leading the sheep they become familiar with his call and um, they become familiar with this call because they're spending time with that shepherd. That shepherd is around them. They've developed a level of trust for that shepherd. And how many know Jesus is our shepherd? He calls himself the good shepherd. Actually, he even talks about the good shepherd in uh, this scripture between John 10 and uh, through John 10, 11. So in John 10, 5, it says that my sheep know my voice and the voice of another that they don't follow. John 10, 27 says my sheep know know my voice and they hear me and by faith we can make that our decree we can make that our declaration that we know his voice and the voice of another we don't follow you know when I first began to get into the things of God and I began to follow God closely when I was very young um, I remember recognizing that my heart jumped at truth my heart instantly knew and recognized truth when I heard it something in me leaped and I believe that um, every human being has that setting somewhere in them that when truth comes to them they automatically know on the inner core of their being they know truth when they hear it even though sometimes when you hear truth, you tend to reject it. Sometimes we tend to, our natural reaction when we hear truth is to reject it in the natural. When we actually do recognize it in the spirit. You know, you come to somebody on the streets and you're ministering on the streets. And um, you are evangelizing and you're speaking the love of God to them. Sometimes you experience some people who really just outwardly reject the love of God at face value. But deep down on the inside, sometimes you can look in people's eyes and you can see that they recognize the truth when they hear it. You can look in their eyes and you can tell that they know you're speaking truth, the truth of the love of God to them. So I think that that's where hearing the voice of God begins. It begins on the inner part of your being where you really just know truth. And when you hear the word of God, your spirit connects with that word no matter how much I don't care how many times you really just reject the word of God there is a part of your spirit that ultimately connects and and jumps at truth when it hears it that's the beginning of hearing the voice of God hearing the word and recognizing the truth of the word and recognizing God's heart in the midst of the word so I'm going to give you guys some really, really juicy stuff. I'm going to go into my personal journal, and I'm going to give you guys 10 different ways, okay? These are 10 different prophetic ways, and I might even add to that list as we continue on this teaching. This is the first session, but there's 10 different ways that God actually speaks to me. 10 different ways that God actually speaks to me individually now these aren't the exclusive ways that God speaks he can speak to people on multiple levels and he speaks to each individual differently there's a specific way that God wants to speak to you but what I'm hoping will happen here is that the ten ways that God speaks to me that I'm going to share with you 
out of the 10 that the Holy Spirit's moved on me to share with you at, at this moment, um, I'm going to pray and believe, God, that it would inspire new and creative ways for you to begin to hear and understand God's voice. You know, I spoke with a brother earlier today, and he was asking me about the voice of God and, and, and what prompts me to hear his voice. Well, first of all, I had to acknowledge that God is constantly speaking throughout the day. That's one thing that we want to be able to acknowledge. God is constantly speaking to us throughout the day. And so with him speaking to us on a regular basis, one of the first t things to sharpening your ears to be able to truly hear the voice of God throughout your day is to acknowledge that he's speaking. And how do you acknowledge he's speaking? Well, you press into him. How do you press into him? Well, you say, hey, God, I noticed these things happening around me. And I feel like I'm seeing that you're trying to tell me something. And you ask him, Lord, what are you t trying to show me? And you'll be surprised that when you begin to approach the Lord throughout your day, you're noticing things or you have questions about things. If you simply acknowledge the Holy Spirit, recognize that he's there and recognize that God is always trying to get you attentive and alert to his voice. Then it's out of that where you will begin to see God actually respond to you. The Bible says that um, if you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. So yes, God is always speaking to us. Jesus is always speaking to us. I can remember a time when I was in Bible school where I woke up in a vision in the middle of the night. This was an open vision where I literally felt the curtains of my eyes peel back and I saw into the spirit. And when I saw in the spirit in this season in my life, Jesus was a far distance away. He was like way out there, way down yonder. And I saw him and I couldn't hear what he was saying. I believe it was symbolic of the time in my life where I wasn't as close to him as I, as I am now. But um, a lot of things spiritually like that, when you're seeing vision like that, is symbolic. So he's so far away at the foot of my bed, so, so far away, distant in the spirit. And I, but I can see him. And I remember being so frustrated because he was saying something very important. And his arms were moving with his words. He was very animated. He was very, um, very passionate about what he was saying. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I wish I could hear what he's saying. I wish I could understand what Jesus is saying to me, but he's too far away at this time. He's too far away for me to hear him. I can't hear his voice. And I remember thinking to myself, wow. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, this is how Jesus always is. He's always talking. He's always trying to communicate with you. He's always trying to fervently get your attention about things because he wants to direct you into the things of God. And so if we come at the Lord in those types of ways, your heart's so open to receive and hear his voice in those ways, you'll be amazed. And I believe we'll all be amazed at what he says to us and what he can begin to say to us. So with that, we're going to get into this. So hearing the voice of God, hearing the creative voice of God, one of the, I'm going to give you guys all 10 of these. And then as we go on through the weeks, I'm going to break them down and talk about them individually. But this is an introductory teaching just to kind of whet your appetite and get you guys interested in this subject. Please share this if you can. Um, if you guys are watching, comment. I'm looking at the comments here. Uh, feel free to comment. Let me know that you're still here. Um, as we go through this, I'm going to start out with number one. Uh, the number one way that God speaks to me, um, just as an example to you, again, I want to pray that this inspires you about how God can speak to you. So the number one way that God speaks to me is through my heart. It's through my heart. Now, um, the scripture verse, and I'm going to give you guys scripture verses for some of these. I don't have scripture for all of them, but I'm just going to give you guys scripture for some of them. So the number one way that God speaks to me is through my heart or to my heart. Um, it's almost like uh, just a really quick, brief explanation of some of these. Speaking to my heart is like um, my whole being can sense his voice or I don't even want to say voice, but sense what he feels or what he's saying. It's not an audible voice, but it's a feeling. It's a strong impression. It's a strong urge. And usually when I'm feeling the 
when I'm feeling God speak to me through my heart or to my heart, it's through the love of God. Now, when you read the word of God, you begin to learn God's character. You begin to learn about the love of God. You begin to learn about what God likes, what he doesn't like, what he feels, what breaks his heart, and uh, what grieves the Holy Spirit. As you begin to walk with the Lord like that, you learn all of those things in your relationship with him. So as you grow in that, it's not hard for you to begin to feel what God is saying about different things. And his word what he says and the way he speaks to us is always going to line up with his word because his word is his heart so when god speaks to my heart it's almost like he's speaking to my heart with his heart and in the bible scripture luke 24 32 um they were on the road uh to emmaus and they were uh, talking about jesus and then all of a sudden jesus appears to them in the scripture uh, we don't have time to go in there now, but we're going to go in there in the following weeks. But he appears to them in the scripture and he told them after a little bit of a conversation, he looked at them and said, I'm, I'm Jesus. And they looked at each other and they were amazed and baffled because they were shocked that they didn't even recognize how much their hearts burned, they said, when he spoke to them. He, they said their hearts burned. Didn't our hearts burn when we heard the words of Christ and oftentimes my heart will indicate to me God's voice that burning that passion that burning in my spirit that fire the fire of God through his voice that he's speaking as he speaks to me so that's just number one and uh, number two an inner audible voice an inner audible voice and um, one of the things that I experience when hearing the voice of God as an inner audible voice is often when I'm writing. Often when I'm writing, I can hear an inner audible voice. And usually it's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Usually it's the inner audible voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Sometimes I can even hear intercession happening inside my spirit. And I can line my mouth up with that intercession. But the inner audible voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to me, I often hear when I'm writing. And I can begin to actually dictate specifically what the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is saying to me. I know my prophetic writers who are watching this can agree with me that um, that's something that they actually have experienced. Um, when writing because often when God is touching you or anointed you in that area of gifting of prophetic writing or writing books <clears throat> a lot of what you hear a lot of what you write comes from what you hear as God prophetically begins to give you what to dictate on that paper I believe that's how the writers of the Bible actually wrote the word is where they began to write what they heard the Spirit of the Lord saying to them that's why the Bible says they were inspired by God as holy men were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write the scriptures number three download or deposit this is one of my favorite ways that God speaks to me God speaking through download or speaking through deposit um, I heard a man of God once say that uh, as he was reading the Word of God he felt something drop into the top of his head like a coin in a nickel machine and I never understood what he meant by that until it actually happened to me. And often God speaks to us through download or deposit. In other words, he gives you a package. He gives you a package and when you receive that package, uh, you, you, it becomes your job then to unravel and unwrap and discover what God was actually what God has actually given to you. Sometimes there's even actual literal packages in the spirit that can be given to you by angels that that are brought to you on assignment brought to you by angels but speaking as as download or deposit a lot of the gifts um, come through this avenue a lot of gifts come through this avenue so if you're a musician or if you're a worshiper or let's say you're, you might even be an author or you you might get an idea this way where God would literally download something to you you feel like you've received the entirety of whatever it is that you've received in the spirit and now as you walk that out you're unraveling something that you already received I believe that a lot of things are given to us in this life 
by God through that avenue. You've heard it said that you already have everything that you need. And God has already laid up things that you need in heavenly places. So even out of that, you begin to realize that most of your life you spend discovering and unraveling a lot of things that you already have. The gift that you already have. You begin to discover gifts that have been there that you just haven't uncovered. So when God speaks to you through download or deposit, when he gives you a message or when he gives you some of the prophetic words that I receive come as a download. And then I find myself just dictating and unraveling and interpreting what God has already given me. And I'm spending the next couple of hours just downloading or just just uploading what God has downloaded to me um, and or just downloading what God has already uploaded to me and um, just unraveling that and just interpreting that word. So that's another way that God actually can speak to us. That's one way that he speaks to me. Number four, spontaneous inspiration. Um, I can say as an artist, another great way that God speaks to me is through spontaneous inspiration. Meaning that there's times when I see something that sparks my imagination and then out of that I hear the voice of the Lord or I get an idea. Um, as an artist I can say sometimes I'll see something and then the minute I see something that thing that I saw activates vision and then I begin to see the thing that God wants me to see. So spontaneous inspiration is something that happens often especially when painting as an artist and trying to get an idea, sometimes visually what I see will, will ignite my ima imagination and I will begin to see the vision of what God is trying to show me. But it took that catalyst, it took that, that flame, that, that light, that match, that lit, that sparked and inspired whatever it was that God needed to inspire, kind of woke me up and Whatever I saw ignited the gifting in me, and then I began to see vision on that subject. So spontaneous inspiration is another way that God actually speaks to me. Again, these are just examples as how God speaks to me. I want to believe that God will, that this will inspire new and creative ways that God can speak to you as well. Okay, number five. We're on number five. Um, we're going we're gonna to move it along here because I've only got so much time. But number five, vision, pictures, and dreams. I have those all in the same category. Vision, pictures, and dreams. We're going to break that down in, in another one of these classes in the next couple of weeks. Um, but those are self-explanatory. Vision, pictures, and dreams. I have a lot of visions. I, had a, I see a lot of, a lot of um, spiritual images. I see a lot of images um, that flash before my eyes that God shows me, especially in the waking hours of the morning. One way that God speaks to me a lot is through um, waking images in the morning. So vision, pictures, and dreams. I see some of you guys jumping on here. Shoot me a message. Let me know you're here. Let me know who you are. God bless you guys today. Hallelujah. So um, vision, pictures, and dreams. Number five. Number six. Uh, this is an interesting one. I don't think I've heard a lot of people talk about this way that God speaks, but through the hard places. So another way, the number six way that God speaks to me personally is the hard places, through the hard places. Sometimes I will not hear specifically what God is wanting to say to me until I'm actually pressed into a hard place. And it's in that hard place where my ears instantly pop open and I hear something that God had been trying to say to me that it took a hard place or maybe a little bit of breaking down for me to get to the level and the place where I can actually hear the Lord. How many people have been there? I'm sure that a lot of us have been because it's in that humble place where you can be honored to hear the voice of God on that level. So the hard places is a place where God often speaks to us in one way that he speaks to me. Okay, number, number uh, seven. Uh, number seven, prophetic moments. Prophetic moments. I can say that most of my books, now I'm giving you guys a lot of valuable information here. Like I said, God has me kind of exp being very transparent, exposing my some of my secrets here. Most of my books come from prophetic 
moments. Most of my books come from prophetic moments. And somebody say, well, what's a prophetic moment? Well, a prophetic moment is a way that God can speak to you. Um, he can give you vision, and it's not a visual vision. It's an experiential vision. What do I mean by experiential vision? I mean that you're literally in the middle of a God moment. And that moment is almost as if it's marked in time. And the events and occurrences that take place in that moment are a precedent and an example of a cycle that will will um, that could possibly be a repeating cycle throughout your life. Now, I'm saying that on a positive note because there can be negative repeating cycles in your life. But the one greatest repeating cycle in your life is the cycle of Christ, okay? So I write about this in one of my books. If you guys want to check it out, go to michaelwatsonministries.com. The name of this book is called The Spirit of Victory. And in that book, I describe one of those prophetic moments that God introduced to me as a prophetic cycle where God literally had me experience and walk out a precedent that would repeatedly occur throughout my life. Now, within prophetic moments, one thing that you'll find in the positive prophetic moments of your life, the good moments that God placed there, where God interrupted, where His Kairos time met your life, those moments were moments where Christ was laced in those moments. What do I mean? You experience his death, you experience his burial, and you experience his, uh, uh, you experience his um, resurrection. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. How many people ever heard that if Christ did it once, if Jesus did it once, he'll do it again? A lot of times a prophetic moment is a faith moment where God begins to build your faith. You say you heard you hear David say, I slew the lion and he said to Goliath, just like I slew the lion, I'm gonna slay, I'm gonna I'm going to I'm gonna kill you. Just like I slew the lion. Yeah, she said uh, Shanae says I understand now. So yeah, I'm explaining that a little bit more. Just like I slew the lion, I'm going to kill you, said David. Well, when David slew the lion, that was a faith moment for him. Why? Because a lot of the following moments hinged off of his faith from that one victory. That's what the spirit of victory is about. The spirit of victory is about building your faith off of victories that God has given you throughout your walk. So that's what a prophetic moment is. A prophetic moment is a moment that hinges on the faith of that moment where God is speaking through that moment and that moment becomes a precedent for you to understand and get revelation about similar circumstances throughout your walk when God promised it to you and he and God did it once he'll do it again so one way that God can speak to you uh, is through prophetic moments I've had quite a few prophetic moments in my life and some of them are places where God uh, literally shows you the beginning of a cycle so then you can have revelation about cycles following that moment in that place. There's a lot, a lot to talk about that. Actually, I want to teach about that on one of these days and kind of go into detail, but we're not going to stay too much on that one. Uh, number eight, we're almost to the last one. Number eight, seeing into the wilds. <laughs> seeing into the wilds. Somebody said, what is that? What's seeing into the wilds? Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. Know the wilds of the enemy. One of the ways that God really speaks to me often is, uh, is, is in a deliverance anointing. He'll speak to me and he'll expose and give me revelation of the wiles of the enemy as, as far as getting revelation of the plans of the devil and the operation of the enemy. So seeing into the wiles is knowing his plan, knowing his devices. So that's another way that God will actually speak to me is through that avenue as far as exposing the enemy and giving me revelation on the enemy. Again, this is an experiential situation where revelation and wisdom is coming to me through 
certain situations that God allows me to see the plan of the enemy within. And then I can get a revelation about the spirits that are at work and the demonic principalities, sometimes demonic principalities, sometimes uh, demonic agendas are at work and just having a revelation about that. Knowing how to pray. This is the type of voice that would speak to an intercessor. Knowing how to pray. I just feel activation right now. I feel like some, somebody watching this is being activated. You're an intercessor. Hallelujah. Shoko Rabo Soto. You're an intercessor and your gift is being activated just hearing about this. And I just believe that God is going to begin to uh, open your heart up and you're going to begin to, you know, you're going to begin to experience number eight here. Uh, seeing into the wilds um, as you probably already kind of had an indication of that where God is trying to show you the operation of the enemy in your circumstances how to pray for that how to pray for those situations that you're going through all right number nine ha ah, the voice of angels the voice of angels it's getting late <laughs> um, so Another avenue, the number nine way that God speaks to me personally, again, this is inspiration for you and the creative ways that God wants to speak to you is through the voice of angels. The voice of angels significantly sounds different than the inner voice of the Holy Spirit. Um, God sometimes will send a message to you through an angel. Sometimes it might not be uh, so clear that it was an angel that gave it to you, but sometimes you'll hear something. Sometimes you'll get an inclination. Sometimes your attention will be directed somewhere. You might be scrolling through your phone at some point and something directs you in another direction where you land on something that you needed to hear. Did you know that that is the leading and directing of the hand of God through the angelic realm a lot of times angels are hinting things to you pointing things out a lot of times God's favor operates through uh, angels uh, sometimes people hear the voice of God through angels and don't even know it so that's a situation where you're believing God for promotion at your job and you pray and you ask God to help you at your job well sometimes he'll just send an angel to that boss and whisper in their ear and bring you to their attention or direct their attention towards you or direct their attention to your notes or something Th that's one thing that happens i believe more often than not where there are angels you know carrying messages to us to and fro there are also angels hinting and redirecting attention often so god speaking through the voice of angels the number nine way <laughs> that God speaks to me. Sometimes I'll get revelation. Sometimes I'll have a knowing of when that's actually happening to me. One time I actually asked God a question. And instead of hearing the Holy Spirit, instead of hearing uh, God speak to me, I heard the voice of an angel. It was actually in one ear. <laughs> it was just in one ear. Normally when the Holy Spirit speaks to me, it's through my entire being. But I got an answer from God from the voice of an angel the angel voice I mean for me I could tell it was not and I discerned in the spirit I knew it was the voice of an angel and the Lord had revealed it to me um, and so out of that um, that voice was very soft very light very it, it almost was kind of timid sounding but they come to minister to us the angels come to minister to us they don't come in their own authority but they come in the authority of the Lord so they're very careful in our affairs because they're doing the work of the Lord and they're coming to minister to us on our behalf and they're carrying revelation they're carrying blessing they're carrying the message from the Lord so the voice of angels is the number nine way that God speaks and then number ten uh, still in the subject of angels uh, angels of wisdom and revelations Ephesians it's 117 where it says that I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be open and that you would have the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation there's been many a times where while I've been teaching I have felt the presence of the angel of wisdom and revelation carrying the message of God to be taught or to be ministered to people that were in the meeting 
So that's the number 10 way that God will speak to me. When I'm teaching or when I'm preaching, I often feel the accompanying, accompanying of the angels of, minister, of revelation and wisdom in the midst. And sometimes that angel will get close enough to you where you feel that spirit ignite the wisdom and the revelation of God to you. All of a sudden you, 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 you get the answer to something or you get a word of knowledge. Often that's how the word of knowledge operates. Sometimes the word of knowledge op comes through the voice of an angel or the leading and the directing of an angel while operating under the anointing. Praise the Lord. I gave you guys so much stuff. I'm trying to come to you guys really transparent and just kind of a little bit more real so I can connect with you on these Tuesdays. Sometimes I get tired of sitting behind the desk on Sunday while we're online. But in the meantime, I think this was a really, really refreshing way to do things. Um, I'm going to continue to probably try to do this on Tuesdays. Um, it kind of helps me uh, a little bit so I don't have to run to the studio to get a lot of this stuff done. I don't got to set up the cameras or anything. I can just pop one here with you guys and do this this way. Shoot me a message. Let me know if you liked this. Share this if you can. God bless you, everybody who watched right now. I can only see, I can only see one comment. I think it's uh, Shanae. And uh, God bless you guys. I'm going to pray that you have a good rest of the day. I'm going to close us out in prayer. Father God, I pray and I thank you, Lord God. I thank you as we've taught about the voice of God, about the creative voice of God. As we had our little chat today, our, our Bible study chat, I just pray, Lord God, that you would bless everyone that's watching this. I pray, Lord God, that you would inspire and ignite wisdom and understanding in us. I pray, Lord God, that you would activate our gifts. I pray that you would activate our ears to be able to hear you. I pray that you would move on our hearts. I pray that you would speak to us, that our hearts would burn with fire at your voice, Lord God. Teach us how to walk and live with you in daily life. I feel like that's what these Tuesdays are, are about understanding that God is wanting to draw closer to you and he's trying to press in and urge you to press into him and draw closer to him, that he wants to walk with you daily with whatever you're going through, whatever you're doing, he wants to speak to you and he wants you to be alert and aware. Hey, I'm going to say this in closing concerning the voice of God. Become more alert and expecting for God to speak and you'll begin to hear his voice. You'll begin to see him. And even just listening to this teaching, I'm believing that you're receiving an impartation just from hearing this teaching that some things are going to begin to be activated in you. And within the next couple of weeks, I'm believing that vision, dreams, and the, the voice of God is going to be activated in your life like it, like it may have not been before. That's something that I'm believing God for. God bless you guys. Um, www.breakoutcentercleveland.com is the website. If you'd like to sow into the ministry, it would be a great help for us in this season. Breakoutcentercleveland.com slash give. You can also give on Cash App at cash tag Breakout Church if this message has blessed you. Um, please post a comment. Let us know. And um, also... You can sign up for our email list on BreakoutCenterCleveland.com. Um, that way you can get some of the updates about some things that are going on throughout our week. We're going to be praying on Thursday. Uh, Shanae, she's on the line. Shout out to Shanae. Shanae, go ahead and post the prayer information on there now that we're able to kind of interact a little bit on this video. Post the uh, prayer info on this video if you can. Those of you guys watching, connect with Sister Shanae. She is our prayer leader for Breakout Church, and she is heading up the prayer conference call on Thursdays, which is at 6.30 p.m. every Thursday. And you can find that prayer call information on BreakoutCenterCleveland.com, and she's also going to post it on here. And um, basically, we're believing God also for intercessors to come on the lines and join us. Uh, we're believing God to really just uh, uh, l help lift up our arms in the area of prayer as we're growing as a ministry, as God is moving so strongly in the spirit. Every new place we go to, the Lord said to me, is a new place in intercession that he desires us to go to as well. Because we're a praying church, and we're a prophesying church, and we're all about revival. Well, praise God. God bless you guys. I'll see you guys 
on the next broadcast, which is going to be Sunday at 11. And those of you guys who are watching, please, please call in and pray with us on Thursday if you can at 6.30 p.m. We would love to hear your voice. I believe you have a voice and a word to be released into our city. God bless you guys and have a good rest of the day. Let me know that you guys like this video. Uh, please comment and share if you can. God bless you guys. Have a good rest of your day. Ah, I see that. Thank you, Sinead. So she just posted the information. Awesome. Access code, all that good stuff. And our prayers are recorded. For those of you guys who don't know, our prayers are recorded. And you can find the recordings on our podcast on our website at BreakoutCenterCleveland.com. Thank you for those hearts. God bless you guys. Have a good rest of the day.